So today I'm painting a orc gore grunta, it's called. It's just an orc riding a giant pig, basically. Gore grunta is the copyright friendly name. Um, so yeah, here we go. Uh, he's primed in like a tan color. I'm going to use a bunch of contrast paints. Maybe some others, who knows. <laughs> You've got 120 seconds to captivate me. Okay, I'm going to use Gore Grunta Fur to paint the Gore Grunta's fur. I'm going to use Orc Flesh to paint the Orc's flesh. If that's not captivating, I don't know what is. So I'm going to begin with Gore Grunta Fur. I'm just going to paint this all over the... I lied, time's up. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to paint this all over the the fur and the skin of the boar. Seafoam green is captivating. I'll sit the seafoam green on the screen for you. There you go. Um, so I'm going to be careful to not get this on the armor or his skin too much. But a lot of these colors that I'm about to use will cover each other pretty well. So it uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue if I get some spillage. And I'm also going to use snake bite leather on the leather. This is going to be a, a day of using the colors that are named after things on the things they're named after. Well, that's a leather strap, but that's okay. Sometimes they blend in, but the snakebite leather will cover over that without too much trouble. Um, and I'm going to do this to a super basic level, uh, just to, just as like a, I need to get this army done to play with kind of level. Uh, and I'm going to do the base on stream today too, I believe. I'm going to do a snow base. I did snow on Wednesday, but it wasn't really a snow base. I just kind of slapped some snow on the base. Didn't really have any thought with it. Today I'm going to actually make a base that is fully realized. I'm going to paint the hooves in this color also. This is another example of the thing I say often, where I don't necessarily want the hooves to end up this color. But if I paint them like this now, then if I get bored or I just need to be done at the end, they can just be that color and it won't look ridiculous. If I just leave the primer there, it'll look unfinished. But now I have the option to go back and repaint them the color I actually want them to be, or I can just leave them and no one will know the difference. And the armor is probably the thing I need to avoid the least because it's going to be black. Uh, because it's Black Friday, I figured black armor would be the best choice. And so the black will cover over this fur color no problem. But around the skin and the leather, I am being more careful. It's got some some fur bits in between here. I'm going to do these horns the same way as the t as the hooves basically. 
don't necessarily want them to end up this color, but if I get to the end and I need to be done for whatever reason, they will have paint on them, and so they will at least look like they're finished. I know I've talked several times about use the brush, use a bigger brush than you think you need to. And uh, I probably could use a bigger brush for a lot of this, but there are also a lot of little details mixed in with the fur that I want to try to avoid as much as possible. So I think I've got a happy medium here of uh, brush size to quickness. This brush has a uh, it's not the fattest, but it still has a good amount of bristles, so I can load it up pretty heavily and cover a good amount of surface area each dip of the brush. I'm going to paint the back of this thing. This isn't technically fur, but I'm just going to paint the back of it in this fur color. That way, if I don't go back and paint it, if anyone is looking at the boar, it'll just look like down in the shadow there. It'll just look like more fur. It's not a big deal. Actually, just gonna go. I was trying to be careful and avoid the teeth, but I'm actually, just gonna go over it. I know for a fact I'm gonna paint the teeth a different color today, so. I'm gonna paint the entire, entire head and mouth the same fur and skin color just as a base coat, then any colors I add on top of it will still fit within the, the natural colors of this creature. Since every, like your, the color of your tongue and inside of your mouth and stuff is effectively loosely based on the color of your skin, so. obviously much pinker, at least for most people. It's pinker than your skin, and so we'll add some pink in there later down the line. But for now, this same brown will be just fine. I think that rhymed. Get down, make sure get all the fur in here. And down in there. And then this last little bit right here, and then we can move on to our second color. Okay, I think, oh, nope. Just a little spot there. Otherwise, I think we got it all. So, yep, looks like it. All right, cool. Now I'm going to go on to the skin. And that's just because I want to not do a color that immediately butts up against this brown. 
at least in most places. Um, so I can let that dry. So I'm going to go to Orc Flesh for the Orc's Flesh. I'm going to start with his face. And because this, uh, because I used a tan, it is a darker tan than might be recommended for contrast paint. I'm going to put this on pretty thick so that I get a nice green coat out of it. Just make sure to get all that skin that's back there. And the armor is going to be black, so I'm not super concerned about any little splotches I might get on the armor. So then after we do this, I'm going to go and do the leather color. So hopefully our first brown should be dry by then. And the leather doesn't butt up against the green too much. And then we'll come back and do the armor. Never see seafoam green armor. I mean, I'm sure someone's done it, but... I'll agree, it's probably pretty rare. Alrighty. Just checking, I think his hands are not in gloves. Pretty sure they are indeed just his skin. The beast could use a manicure. I'm sure he could. Don't think that's in the cards for him, though. Unfortunately. Conquering everything in front of you doesn't really jive with cuticle care. His other hand there. Wipe that little bit of green off the leather. So the leather color will not cover this green color that well. Alright, I think that's all the skin on this guy. Well, that's a standard that changes now. Wow. Alrighty. So then I'm going to go and get snake bite leather. And, as you might imagine, put it on all the leather. So it's going to be these straps around the ankles here. The straps holding on the saddle. And these colors are so similar that I'm being pretty indiscriminate with where I put this. And it'll just sort of flow into the the first brown we did, into the recesses of that, and just sort of shade it a little bit more. If I happen to miss, so I can go through this step really quickly. Just make sure to get some on every piece of it. Alright, and then we've got this guy's pants and the stuff around his leg. His belt will be this color, just making sure to be careful around the the green. I'm going to do all this stuff in this brown also. Couple more straps here 
and this part will be done. It's got some wrapping on the the axe handle here. Doesn't have very much wood on him, just the uh, just the axe handle. So I will differentiate that and not just make it this same color. Strap along here. It's one of those paint jobs that looks ridiculous and messy while you're doing it, but then at the end it'll all come together. <laughs> At least I hope it'll all come together. That's the plan. Alright, I'm going to do this up here. I'm going to do this whole skull apparatus in this color. Um, there are some straps around the skull, and rather than being super careful, just gonna paint the whole thing and then I'll come back when I do the bones and stuff and pick them out and just make sure to not hit the straps it seems easier since I would have to avoid them anyway coming back with the bone color if I was super careful about painting them I'd still have to avoid them so I may as well just be messy now and only have to be careful once That should do it for our leather. Just double checking. Yep, I think that's it. All right. So now we'll move on to the black. I'm gonna use black Templar for this. The first color that doesn't actually match what a <laughs> raids in cuticle here. This is the first color that doesn't actually match what we're painting. But that's okay. We had a good run of three colors. So I'm going to paint all the armor panels in this color. Um, in some places, I'm guessing I'm going to need two coats of this. But we'll see. Perhaps not. This is the coat now that I have to be the most careful with because this black will show up on the fur, on the leather, on the skin, pretty much everywhere. So I do not want to get it on any of that stuff. Thank goodness he doesn't have a lot of those. Those are a pain to paint. Uh, I'm going to come back and do the metal, like the chain mail and stuff in a different color. So I won't worry about that right now. I'm going to do those in actual, an actual metallic color, not a contrast paint. So... And that'll go for all the belt buckles and stuff, too. I'm 
Just knee pads though, I'll get those with this black color. Let's see, this thing down here looks like it's a piece of that armor. So I can't remember if I've done this on stream before, but basically what I'm going to do with this guy is do a super basic paint scheme of just contrast maybe a dry brush and call it a day and then do a relatively fancy base and then basically as a just to show off that even if your paint job isn't that great a a well done base can make the model look way better than it is at least that's the plan I think that I think that a uh a good paint job with a bad base uh, looks much worse than a bad paint job or a worse paint job and a very good looking base. Which I'm not sure why, since the model is way bigger than the base. I think that the better paint job on the model would matter more, but. Parts of the model get in the way of part other parts of the model. Oh, this is like a whole thing hanging down here, okay. I think we're almost done with the boar's armor, and then we'll just have the orc's armor to do, and then we'll be done with armor. It's metal there, okay, I don't need to paint that. Uh, just checking, yep, that looks to be all of the boar's armor, so we'll move on to the orc armor. The only reason I did all of the boar armor first was because there's more metal that needs to be painted on the boar's armor. Uh, and so we want that to start drying first so that we can start in on our metal immediately. More of the orc armor is just this black color without any silver butting up against it. So this can be the last and it can take a little longer to dry and it's not a problem. I think next though we'll do the bones and the hooves and stuff. That stuff is the first color that's on that stuff has been drying the longest, so it's probably safe to start in on that. And I'll do that by doing basically the same order that I put color on things first. I'll do the same order when doing the details. That way all your paint has as long as possible to dry. In an ideal world, um, you just paint it and leave it and not touch it again until it's dry. But with this one hour limitation that I have given myself for this stream, I have to sort of think about things like that. And I think it's a skill that translates, though, to anything, because 
you set yourself a personal goal of, say, you have an hour after dinner to paint. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a miniature done every day after dinner in my hour that I have. Then that sort of thing of leaving certain parts to dry while you paint other parts can be a good skill to have. Are the wish brushes still going strong? Uh, the wish brushes are around here somewhere. I'm not actually using them currently, though. Um, but they are around here. I think, actually, one of them might be Janet's current main paintbrush on her desk. Uh, but I'm not sure. This brush I'm using currently is... Uh, the brush that came in the WizKids Paint Night Manticore set. And it's a great, like, all around base brush, basically. I'm painting today as well. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. The, the Wish brushes are surprisingly good. Um, like, Compared to the super cheap brushes that you get on or at like a like Hobby Lobby or something, the wish brushes blow them out over the water by like a factor of ten at least. Green is best, so say the Salamanders. Excellent. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't think that like a, a two two streams ago, I think I started using one of these, which is a Hobby Lobby brush, and it fell apart. Not fell apart. It just was like... It was terrible within 30 seconds. The Wish brushes... I painted Archaon. The entire Archaon model I painted with Wish brushes. And they were great. So... <laughs> that's pretty funny. And they were like... A dollar for three or something. They were like 33 cents a piece. Something like that. I'll have to go back and look. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> that was the price. Uh, so now I'm going to go in and do all the teeth and the bones. And I'm going to start with Zandri Dust. Then I'm going to come back with a lighter color. Yeah, they basically, they wouldn't hold their shape. Um, like, brushes, eventually, as they go bad, you, like, you rinse them and wash them enough. And they'll just start to fray. These, yeah, the Hobby Lobby ones. These were fraying as you had paint on them, basically. They weren't even holding their shape with paint. So, they were ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to paint all the the teeth and tusks and stuff now with this is Andrew Dust. I have no idea how long where my rushes came from. That's how long I've had them. Yeah, that's fair. I go through them at a pretty rapid pace. I don't think I've ever had a brush. Oh, that's his tongue. That's not a tooth. I painted that as a tooth. Oh, well. We'll fix that later. Um, I'm not sure I've ever had a single brush that's lasted me more than six months or a year. But I also don't buy... Uh, don't ever buy expensive brushes. You know, I guess I have one. I have like a, uh, I think it's a Windsor & Newton, like double zero that I bought. I think I actually bought it on a Black Friday, amusingly enough. Um, or one of their, some sale or something. And basically just used it for like eyes and stuff. It's somewhere in the garage, but. Most of the time I use Walmart brushes or Wish brushes recently or uh, Hobby Lobby brushes if they're not complete trash. 
And Army Painter, I guess. I use Army Painter a lot just because I can get him at Galactic. And I don't really ever use a Citadel Games Workshop brushes as my main brush, but they're always kind of around. <laughs> and every now and again, I'll pick one up if I need to do something specific, and they seem to be the right fit for that job. But so far, I've painted this entire miniature with this brush, so... No reason to swap if it's working. Alright, that's all that. Got some bone up here. Try to miss those straps that I painted earlier. And uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, or I think I said it in the middle, actually, closer to the middle. Uh, for this paint job, I'm going super basic, and I'm going to do a relatively fancy base, just as a test, really. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of times, in my opinion, the base is going to do more for you than the paint job. Meaning that, a pro, for instance, a pro-painted miniature on a base done by a five-year-old will look worse than a, you know, general hobbyist paint job and a fancier base. At least in my opinion. And I'm going to do that today and we'll see what everybody else thinks. Nashville, Georgia. I didn't even know that was a place. But yeah, um, at some point, we definitely should. Um, pandemic kind of makes things difficult currently, but hopefully we'll get that sorted out. Someday. Once we're, once we're allowed to have tournaments again. That will be that will be a great grand old time. What kind of base am I doing? I'm doing a snow base. No idea. I didn't I didn't get that idea from anywhere. It just kinda of came to me. I'm not sure why. I just thought these guys, you know, deserved a snow base. But it was my original idea. I definitely didn't get it from anyone else. So if you're curious. If anyone's wondering. I use Elmer's glue and rock dust for my bases. Makes the Salamanders and Armageddon Steel Legion look like they're in the desert. Yeah, that's a uh, that would make sense. I, uh, I mean, depending on what I'm putting down, uh, I also use like a an Elmer's glue or just white glue mud or white glue dirt and water kind of slurry, but. Uh, Often on stream, I just use super glue because it super glue and texture paint because it goes way faster. The glue, water, dirt slurry takes decades to dry. <laughs> Not conducive for an hour. You must be a genius. Yeah, I am. Uh, it's me. That sounded like fake news. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm using flesh terror red right now. I'm just gonna do the plume on this guy real quick. Um, but yes, it was actually fake news. Michael, who's in the chat currently, uh, is painting this army. And he's doing snow bases on his. So. I was like, I should do a snow base. All right. 
Brady. I think... Oh, was your hair red also on uh, on your models? It probably was. Now I've forgotten what yours looked like. I've probably just subconsciously stole... Well, so the snow base idea, I straight up on purpose, like, Michael did his snow, I'm going to do snow. That was just stolen. But I wonder, like, subconsciously, have I stolen other elements of <laughs> your paint job? That would be funny. All right, I'm going to grab some Iron Breaker. No, Iron Warriors. Yeah, Iron Warriors. And do the metal. That's funny. Oh, that's... That's a... Where is... This iron, first Iron Warriors I picked up is dead, so I'm just looking for another one. I thought I had another one. I may not, though. Oh, never mind. I had already gotten the one that works down. The dead one's somewhere there. Okay. We're good. Alright. So I'm just going to paint all the the metal here. Oh, I missed something. Oh, I had to dip for a second answering an email. Got it. Um, for Siege of Augusta. If anyone is in the chat wondering what Siege of Augusta is, it's an annual event in, as you might imagine, Augusta. Uh, Mr. Matthew, who's in the chat, is the one who runs the 40k portion of this event. Um, they are hosting a tournament, as usual. Um, because of the pandemic, they are socially distancing their tables and having mask protocol similar to that of a chess clock protocol in 40k, wherein if one person requests a mask uh, or re says they would like both people to wear a mask, both people have to, um, and you're also required to be in a mask while walking around the building. Um, if both of you, if you and your opponent feel comfortable playing without a mask, I personally disagree with you, but that is allowed. Um, but yeah, so if you're if you're looking for a 40k event and feel that the precautions being taken are adequate for your lifestyle, then I would say go play in that event because they do run an excellent event. It's at a brewery that uh, one of the guys owns up there. And honestly, you can't have a better... You really can't find a better uh, location to host a 40k event. I mean, obviously, besides Galactic Comics and Games. Because there is no better location. But if you had to be somewhere else, that's a pretty nice spot. <laughs> uh, just read the chat. What else needs... To, oh, yeah. I guess this giant thing needs to be silver. Feel free, Matt, if I got anything wrong about that description about mask protocol or anything like that. Feel free to correct me, obviously. I think that's correct, though, that... Well, I, I'm, I know that the chess to clock thing, that's how you guys are doing it. I wasn't... Sh I'm pretty sure... You require them if you're walking around the building, is that correct? If you're not playing your game, basically. Pretty sure I got that right. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Gray water, hate their color scheme. Mustard yellow and blue gray does not mix well in my book. That is fair. I'm not even sure I know what the official colors of uh, of any of the cities are, besides Anvil Guard, which 
sort of maybe doesn't exist anymore. Spoiler alert. What are you trying to say, Michael? Not a fan of yellow. I'm trying to throw some shade on my uh, on my most recent army. Well, thanks. Oh, I just noticed I missed a uh, I missed his knee pad. It was meant to be black. You know what that means? Now it's silver. Maybe it can be a... This was a replacement piece of armor that he got. Alright, so now I'm just going to put some silver on a couple of these uh, upward-facing rivets here. Just to mix up the color. And then I'm also going to put a little slash of this color on some of the gouges in the armor. So like right here, I'm just going to go... And under these like that just to mix it up a little bit and right here good and right there that'll do and some more of these rivets up here all right now I'm going to get my lighter color out for the bone, dry brush them real quick, then do a quick dry brush to the whole miniature, and then do the base. What time is it? 44. All right, we're going to have to do a quick snow base. We can do it, though. <laughs> oh, yellow for the armor. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love their special rules, though. Artillery and War Machine Heavy with emphasis on Iron Drake's appeals to me in melee-oriented game at Run Guns. You should talk to uh, Landon Johnson. He, uh, up until very recently, he played a Iron Drake artillery-focused uh, Great Water list, and, uh, you know, it went okay for a turn or two. I'm just dry brushing all these teeth with this uh, Rackarth flush color, which I need to get more of. It's almost out. I'm sort of doing a combination of dry brushing and over brushing, depending on the spot. Tell the really truth on how it went. Uh, well, you know. Um, my flesh eater quartz deployed. Then his artillery fired all the guns. My flesh eater quartz were still standing there. And then they rolled over him like... I don't even know what. Like a 90-pound bowling ball hitting some pins. Great downside to my list is little to no mobility that hurts real bad in an objective heavy game. Yep, that can that can be a problem sometimes. All right, I'm gonna take some. Mm, is this the color I want? No, pallid witch flesh. That's the color I want. Uh, I'm gonna paint in just a couple tiny little details. Oh, I didn't do the orcs teeth. All right, they're gonna be this color now. They're a little too white, to be honest, but that's okay for now. All right, then I'm going to paint the eyeballs of the orc and of the boar. Oh, he only has one eye. The other eye is covered in a patch. Mobility is very important. Greg loves playing against my Dawn Riders. That's a word for it. All right. I'm going to get Wildwood, and I'm just going to do this on the patch that's on his eye and on the tiny bit of wood that's on his axe here. 
And then I'm going to go on to the base. Alright. Oh, and the patch on his eye. Yeah, let me do that too. go alrighty now I'm just gonna take this pallid witch flesh and give him a very light overall dry brush with it just because this is about as far as we're taking this model and so just to give everything a little bit of a highlight this is what I'm going to use get a lot most of this paint off here and then just find some edges and go down them this orc armor has a lot of edges in strange places, so I'm just going to hit those. This will bring out the those strange edges because the, the white is so stark compared to the black. You don't have to do very much for it to show up. good there I think I'm just gonna do a little bit on the fur in a couple places just to mix it up a little bit hit the pants over here get a little more paint on the brush yeah I built these so long ago I don't remember how they were like to build but I'll take your word for it they are a sweet model, though, that's for sure. These, I must have built these, like, within a few months of them releasing, so it's been several years at least, I feel like. Get the plume a little bit. Dry brushing this guy in white will also, uh help to sort of fit him in the world of a snow base to a greater or lesser extent. I'm just going to take some Blood Angel Red now, do their eyes real quick, and then I'll start the base. The stream will probably end up being a little bit longer than an hour, but that's okay. It's the day after Thanksgiving. More people are home. They might need something to watch. Should have done a bonus stream last night. Get all those Steelers fans that had their game postponed because the Ravens don't understand that it takes all of us. And all got COVID. All right. But I'm not mad. Don't worry about it. It's not like we lost our bye week earlier in the year or anything like that. So, Because the Titans don't understand that it takes all of us. Nothing like that. No, no, no. Again, though, I'm not mad. Alright, so I'm just looking for my tufts now, because I need a very specific tuft to do this winter. You know, actually, I've always done a very specific tuft for winter. I'm going to just say, screw it, I'm going to pick a different tuft. We're going to go for something different. I'm going to go for those. Um, Alright. Wow, I paid for an hour. <laughs> First of all... You didn't pay for anything. Second of all, you're getting more than what you paid for that you didn't pay for. All right, so I'm going to use a uh, sort of concoction of different things here to make the base. Like I said, normally I use texture paint, uh, but even that will take a little bit too long to dry for this. So this is a mixture of bits of cork, uh, some weathering powder, and some sand, basically. Um, so I'm just going to put some super glue on this guy's base. And then I'm going to sprinkle this concoction 
on top of it and whatever sticks sticks and that'll give us sort of a varied ground and I'm not worried about complete coverage because anything that doesn't get covered I will cover with the snow texture I paid for an hour and I only want to <laughs> that's funny yeah, for sure. I enjoy hanging out and just uh, painting and chatting. But I do like to still keep it to roughly an hour. So I'm just taking this stuff and I'm just piling it on here. Is this on camera? No. Now it's on camera. So I just got like this gravel, some sand, some dust apparently, some uh, some cork, all sorts of stuff. And then I'm just going to tap off the extra. I'm going to glue my hands together. Awesome. Just put that down there. Blow off any extra that didn't quite get glued down. Then I'm just going to take a beat up brush and just go through like this. Wiping off anything that didn't stick down immediately because it'll just get in the way. Get it off the base rim if it happens to be on the base rim. Okay. Got a bigger chunk in there. All right, so there. That's glued down. So now we have a sort of varied texture on the base. And that combination of stuff there is just basically from basing other things. Whatever I'm sprinkling on a base, I'll just put the same box underneath it at all times. And so over the days and weeks and months of painting, it'll just sort of build up as a mixture. And then I'll just sprinkle it on bases. Because sometimes I don't use that stuff. Sometimes I will be doing a different basing scheme, and so I'll just be sprinkling a specific item. But I just sprinkle it over that same box, and uh, eventually you get a varied concoction of stuff. And so you can easily get a combination like that. Never go full wall. It's always base talk. Yeah, man. Should have renamed it. Wow. <laughs> I would have renamed it. There is another series on the YouTube page that I was going to do more of, and then I kind of just never had the time about basing. I think there's two whole videos on there. I think one of them is actually a snow base, amusingly. So, um, All right, so now... Just let, letting that super glue dry for a second or two. I'm going to take... I'm trying to think. I'm actually going to put my tufts on first, now that I think about it. I'm going to... I'm just going to grab one of these with some tweezers. Put a little bit of CA on there. Find a spot and stick it. And this is on the gravel now, so I'm pushing it down pretty hard. Ooh to make sure that it is truly stuck. So the gravel being an uneven surface will make it a little harder to stick. One more, I think. Then we'll put some color on this base. That'll work, I think. So there. There's our, uh, our tufts on there. And honestly, um, what you could do is mix, take a little bit of this concoction, if you're going to use something like this, and just mix a little bit of paint in with it, and then put it on the base and you wouldn't even have to paint it. You could just put it straight on there. But I can't exactly... It looks okay right now, but you can tell it's unpainted gravel and unpainted cork and stuff, so... It really does need to have something done to it. So, let's see. I'm just going to take an old brush here. And I'm using Agros Dunes. I'm just going to 
work it in to this mixture just to give it a uniform color and to not make it look so uh, so just like ah oh, yes that's cork that's gravel The snow will also cover a lot of it, so we don't have to have perfect coverage. And I'm doing it pretty thin also, so that uh, I don't have to take forever to dry it before I put the snow on. Because if your paint under your snow is not dry before you apply the snow, uh, you'll get a nice muddy snow look, which for some things is fine. But in this case, I'd like it to be fresh snow on top of the ground. Not muddy. Alright, so that'll work. Put some varied color on there now. So now I'm going to dry this. Looks more like grassland than tundra, yeah. Uh, Alright, so I'm just going to take the hair dryer and dry this real quick. Make sure it's mostly dry before I start putting snow on it. Doesn't have to be completely dry. Yeah. That is the one problem with hair dryer on stream. Noise. That's relatively dry now. As long as we're gentle with the application of snow, we'll be okay. So now, I'm just going to get my... Holland Blizzard and my scooper tool. Oh, this this pot's dried out or empty rather. There's nothing left in it. I'll use this one. There we go. There's some. So I'm just gonna take this and apply it straight down on here. it in a couple different spots here. It will be a little, there's still a little bit of wetness in this uh, base, so we might have a little bit of brown snow in a couple places, but not a big deal. I'm going to make sure to get it worked into the grass also. So I'm going for a, uh, work, make sure to get some down in all the grasses here. I'm going for a, there is snow on the ground look, uh, not necessarily complete blanket of snow. Uh, both are perfectly valid options for basing. I'm just going with this one, mostly because it's a giant base and I don't want to use tons of snow right now. Um, but can absolutely do both. Right. Make sure to get some of the little granules into the dirt here, or into the grass, I mean. Sort of go over top of it. That usually works pretty well to get it in there. <laughs> oh, great. The cool thing about Blizzard is that it tastes pretty good. Awesome. I'm glad we're eating our paint. Alright, so I'm just going to smack that down in there all right and that'll work it's good enough for me 
I'm going to pop him off and paint the base for him. You won't, don't want to have too much, so it's kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to wipe off any snow that's on the base room here. And I'm going to take my Sigor Brown that I've been using on base rooms recently. Give it a, a quick coating of that. It's a thicker base rim, so I might have to go over it twice. Maybe not. We'll see. Let's knock my paint over. Good. You know, I will say, I'm going to knock on this wood here. I have never knocked a paint over on stream. Which is actually pretty impressive, because this is episode 58. That means for at least the last 58 hours that I have had streamed painting, I have not knocked over a paint. Surprising, but a happy surprise. Surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, I guess I'll say. All right, here's his base room done. And stick him up here. Hang on to him so that he doesn't fall and get wetness all over everything. But yeah, so there's the uh, there's the gore grunt all finished. I think I think if you look I think if you look at this paint job independent of the base, it looks pretty mediocre. Or like it, it's fine. I put color on everything. I dry brushed the model, called it a day. But the inclusion of the base I think helps it a lot. And I think a model that was painted for 10 hours but was just on a I'm just going to put gravel on a base, call it a day. I think uh I think this base would win in a which looks better competition. But I could be wrong. If you think something else, feel free to let me know. But yeah, that'll do it for this episode. Uh, I'll be back on Monday painting something 40k related. Not sure what yet. Then on Wednesday, I'm going to paint a giant eagle. I happen to get one of those. Um, I just got done painting the wings on whatever Teclas's mount is. I really like the color that they came out, so I'm going to do that same color combination on the wings of this giant eagle. And then next Friday I'll be here doing something Warhammer or Age of Sigmar related, I think. So yeah, again, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you guys next time.